Seeking the Ox Desolate forests and fearful in jungles, he is seeking an ox which he does not find. Up and down dark, nameless, wide-flowing rivers, in deep mountain thickets, he treads many bypaths. Bone-tired, heart-weary, he carries on his search for this something which he yet cannot find. At evening, he hears the cicadas chirping in the trees. The ox has never really gone astray, so why search for it? Having turned his back on his true nature, the man cannot see it. Because of his defilements, he has lost sight of the ox. Suddenly, he finds himself confronted by a maze of crisscrossing roads. Greed for worldly gain and dread of loss spring up like searing flames. Ideas of right and wrong dart out like daggers. This is the first stage of Buddhist practice, what one may call an awakening of faith. Here, one has heard of the teachings of the Buddha, and within them recognizes that there is a profound truth waiting to be realized. The student has not yet begun practice, though, and dualistic thinking still surrounds and confounds him or her. Like daggers, discriminatory views snag and hinder the seeker of the Dharma. Finding the Tracks Innumerable footprints has he seen in the forest and along the water's edge. Over yonder, does he see the trampled grass? Even the deepest gorges of the topmost mountains can't hide this ox's nose, which reaches right to heaven. Through the sutras and teachings, he discerns the tracks of the ox. He has been informed that just as different shaped golden vessels are basically the same gold, so each and every thing is a manifestation of the self. But he is unable to distinguish good from evil, truth from falsity. He has not actually entered the gate, but he sees in a tentative way the tracks of the ox. This stage represents the student's progression to an analytical level of understanding in regard to the nature of the self, the dharma, and the tenets of Zen. The student has still yet to experience Satori, and therefore only retains a shallow, insubstantial understanding of enlightenment. Here, a student may be well versed in sutra recitation, but there is a far journey ahead to true understanding of reality. The First Glimpse of the Ox A nightingale warbles on a twig, the sun shines on undulating willows. There stands the ox, where could it hide? That splendid head, those stately horns, what artist could portray them? If he will but listen intently to everyday sounds, he will come to realization, and at that instant see the very source. These six senses are no different from this true source. In every activity, the source is manifestly present. It is analogous to the salt in water, or the binder in paint. When the inner vision is properly focused, one comes to realize that that which is seen is identical with the true source. This is the stage where one has attained a satori, catching a glimpse of one's true nature. It is, however, essential to keep practicing diligently and to not take the first glimpse of reality as supreme enlightenment, or this insight will be for naught. Catching the Ox He must tightly grasp the rope and not let it go, for the ox still has unhealthy tendencies. Now it charges up to the highlands, now it loiters in a misty ravine. Today he encountered the ox, which had long been cavorting in the wild fields, and actually grasped it. For so long a time has it reveled in these surroundings that breaking it of its old habits is not easy. It continues to yearn for sweet-scented grasses, it is still stubborn and unbridled. If he could tame it completely, the man must use his whip. Here, one has continued practicing Zen diligently, and now holds the true nature firmly in his or her heart. It is the first time of comprehension of the true nature apart from dualistic thinking, where it has been attached to ideas of separateness and individuality in the world. One now comprehends the true nature of his or her self as completely empty, without mediation or concepts, which require dualistic thought. Since the self is empty, it has the ability to be anything. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. This is truly apprehended for the first time. Taming the Ox He must hold the nose rope tight and not allow the ox to roam, lest off to muddy haunts it should stray. Properly tended, it becomes clean and gentle. Untethered, it willingly follows its master. With the arising of one thought, another and another are born. Enlightenment brings the realization that such thoughts are not unreal, since they even arise from our true nature. It is only because delusion still remains that they are imagined to be unreal. 
This state of delusion does not originate in the objective world, but in our own minds. At this stage, one must keep up the practice of Zen ardently, for enlightenment is now being made your own. Having attained the truth, it is easy to fall into arrogance or laziness, thinking that one has attained all there is to know, or is even equal unto Shakyamuni Buddha. These egotistical thoughts are empty themselves, however, and it takes great dedication to try to dispel these notions. The stage of seizing the ox is this great effort. Seizing the ox is grasping clearly the fact that the essence of yourself is completely empty, and at the same time all beings in the universe are also completely empty. Riding the Ox Home Riding free as air, he buoyantly comes home through evening mists and wide straw hat and cape. Wherever he may go, he creates a fresh breeze, while in his heart a profound tranquility prevails. This ox requires not a blade of grass. The struggle is over. Gain and loss no longer affect him. He hums the rustic tune of the woodsman and plays the simplest songs of the village children. Astride the ox's back, he gazes serenely at the clouds above. His head does not turn. Try though one may to upset him, he remains undisturbed. This is the fruit of the seizing of the ox stage. Here one fully recognizes that enlightenment and ignorance, good and bad, loss and gain, are empty, and therefore the difference between these concepts has vanished. This is a state of true freedom, but there is still progress to be made. The complete freedom and joy accompanying this stage can cause one to cling to this state of mind and not perfect their practice. Therefore, there is still a ways to go on the road to enlightenment. The Ox Forgotten, Self Alone Only on the ox was he able to come home, but lo, the ox now vanished and alone and serene sits the man. The red sun rides high in the sky as he dreams placidly. Yonder, beneath the thatched roof, his whip and idle rope are lying. In the Dharma there is no two-ness. The ox is his primal nature. This he has recognized. A trap is no longer needed when a rabbit has been caught. A net becomes useless when a fish has been snared. Like gold which has been separated from the dross, like the moon which has broken through the clouds, one ray of luminous light shines eternally. At this state, one has truly and completely forgotten the self. One resides in a world of complete emptiness. At this point, koans and other practice devices are unneeded, but there is still room for growth. There is still a lingering self-consciousness that the world is without substance, and a self to which the koans are now useless which needs to be forgotten. Only the true self remains. More exactly, you enter the world in which the true self also does not come into consciousness. This is truly that world in which you have forgotten the self completely, a world of complete emptiness, without even a wisp of cloud to obstruct your vision.